guys it's Leah welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to as you can see a very long overdue book haul we have over 50 books to go through today so we are going to get straight into it this has been a long time coming feel free to go grab yourself a snack or a drink I've got my chamomile tea because god knows I'm going to need it I am so excited to go through all of these books with you and let's get into it we are not starting in any particular order I'm just going to grab whatever is closest to me the first one being Die My Love by Ariana Harwick this book was recommended to me by one of my best friends. We both love Clarice Lispector so much and she was kind of searching for authors like her or like who talk about similar themes. She discovered Ariana Howick's and really loved this book. She said that I would also love it so I instantly got my hands on it and I'm so excited to read it. It is such a short little translated fiction moment and I love these covers, these editions so much. I don't know what it is about the charcoal press covers but I always absolutely adore them. This I also think is a series. I think this is the first in like a little trilogy. And I don't often come across translated fiction trilogies or like literary fiction series or trilogies. So I'm very excited for this one. I feel like I'm going to absolutely love it. One book down, the next one we are going to go for is Death Valley by Melissa Broder. I have had this on my radar ever since it was published. This one was very kindly sent to me by the publisher and I'm still so excited to read it. I can't believe I haven't read it yet. I really don't know too much about this. I've always wanted to read from Melissa Broder. She also wrote Milk Fed, which is meant to be one of the best like female rage unhinged sort of women books and I feel like I do need to get to that one but I feel like I'm gonna love this one so much based off of all of the reviews I've seen. On the back it does say think the chronicles of Narnia but instead of a wardrobe it's a cactus. I am so excited for this. It sounds so good. Also another really short one. So it's one that I'm definitely going to get to soon. We then have another book that was sent to me by a publisher and that is Nightwood by Juna Barnes. This I believe is a classic with an introduction by T.S. Eliot and I absolutely love T.S. Eliot. He is one of my favourite poets. So if he has introduced something you bet your ass I'm gonna read it. On the synopsis it says, Nightwood tells the stories of the love lives of a group of American expats and Europeans in Paris in the 1920s. A modernist masterpiece and one of the earliest novels to explicitly portray homosexuality. The influence of Juna Barnes's novels remains exceptional. I am so excited. I've heard just incredible things about this book and this edition by Faber, I am absolutely obsessed with. And this is another really short one. I know I said in 2024 that I wanted to read longer books and that is still absolutely one of my goals but I'm a short book girly till I die. Especially if it's a translated fiction or a modern classic. I'm gonna eat it up every time so I'm so excited for Nightwood. Another translated fiction that I'm excited for is Crooked Plough by Itama Vieira Jr. These editions too I think they are yeah the Virgo editions. I am obsessed with all of them. I really do want to collect them. But this one is Crooked Plough and again I don't really know too much about this one but I've seen a multitude of really good things. To give myself a little bit of an idea as to what this is about but also you guys it does say that this is one of the most important Brazilian novels of the century so far. Rolled as a masterpiece this fascinating and gripping story about the lives of subsistence farmers in Brazil's poorest region. Three generations after the abolishment of slavery is at once fantastic and realist encompassing themes of families spirituality and political struggle. I am very excited about this. I've only heard great things again so it's another one that I'm really hoping I get to soon. On a completely different note we have a really new release and that is Never by Jessa Hastings. Initially I was so excited to get to this book. I had it pre-ordered. I was like the second that it arrives I'm gonna start reading it. I still haven't read it but ever since I've heard not really great reviews at all. I've actually heard some really bad things about this book so now I'm very apprehensive about getting into it. I don't know if I'm gonna love it. Obviously Jessa Hastings wrote the Magnolia Park series which I absolutely adore. I love it so much. I love that entire series. So I was so excited for this. I don't even know if I'm going to read it now. I don't know. If you have read this, please let me know if it is as bad as people are saying because I don't know if I want to get to it anymore. But just in case, I could be convinced. We then have The Sundial by Shirley Jackson. I adore Shirley Jackson with my whole heart and soul. She's one of my favourite modern classic writers. She is one of my favourite gothic writers. She obviously did The Haunting of Hill House and oh my god, how have I forgotten? It's literally right behind me. We have always lived in the car so those are two of her most notable works. I've read both of them. I absolutely adore both of them and I want to read everything she ever released. And I've heard incredible things about the sundial. I didn't really know which one I would want to go for next but this one really really caught my eye. I really don't want to know too much about any of her books before I get into them again because they are just always leaving me so astounded. My jaw on the floor. I love the way she writes gothic. The way she writes gothic themes and antidotes and like gothic estates and homes and characters 
I love it so much. She is one of my favorite writers. I'm so excited to read more from her. And the next one I definitely will read really soon is The Sundial. So again, if you've read any Shirley Jackson, please let me know which one you think I should get onto next. I'm so excited for this one. This is probably one of the books that is like most immediate on my TBR. Another one that I'm so excited about, and I have been fully aiming and anticipating to read this for years and I still cannot believe I haven't. Sprite's Head Revisited by Evelyn Wo. I got this really gorgeous edition in a charity shop the other day. I fell absolutely head over heels for it and I just love that kind of old thrifted classic book style. This is one that I always knew I would probably adore and love when I do get around to it and I'm still fully anticipating that and I honestly think what urged me to pick it up now was Saltburn. I absolutely loved Saltburn, obviously the movie so much. You've probably seen it because everyone has and I saw so many people saying that if you liked Saltburn you should read this and that there were a ton of comparisons and that is definitely what has urged me to finally get my hands on it. I don't know when I'll get to it but I'm so excited to read it. It's one I definitely aim to read this year oh my god and then this next book i got this book so this book is a french edition of one of my favorite books of all time i who have never known men by jacqueline hartman i honest to god i adore this book so much I've recommended it in every single video, so if this is not the first time you are seeing me, you definitely would have heard me speak about it. But obviously that book is translated from French, so I really wanted to get my hands on a French edition. I am French, so I can kind of speak French, I can kind of read French. Not the best that I always have, I definitely want to get back on track in being completely fluent, and by doing that, I aim to read this in French. This is what it looks like under the dust jacket, and I am just absolutely obsessed. This book had me flawed. If you haven't read I Who Have Never Known Men yet, please take this as your sign to do so. Jacqueline Hartman's writing is just so astounding and beautiful and so heartbreaking and melancholic and I'm so intrigued to see if it feels the same or like better or I prefer the English translation than I would the French. But yeah I found this so cheap online that I just couldn't pass up the opportunity of getting my hands on it and I'm so happy that I have the French edition. Also, I'm just gonna apologize now because we have approximately one hour of sunlight left so the lighting is definitely gonna change. I'm very sorry. Next we have Son of Blood and Ruin by Marilee Lars. This book was in a Fairy Loot subscription. It is absolutely beautiful. I know absolutely nothing about this and to be honest I don't think it is one that I would have picked up had I not actually got it in the Fairy Loot subscription. I do actually need to read what it is about before deciding whether I want to pick it up or not but I thought I would show you guys because it's absolutely beautiful and Fairy Loot books are always stunning. Oh, we then have a proof that I got when I went to the Fourth Estate live show. I think it was in November or early December last year. And it is Hagstone by Sinead Gleason. The main reason that I picked this one up when I was there was it had so many of my buzzword, like my go-to buzzword words for when I want to find books to read. Being like one of the best ones, introducing the haunting debut novel. The sea is steady for now, the land readies itself. What can be done with the women on the cliff? As far as I am aware, I know that this is going to be steeped in folklore and womanhood i think there's going to be such incredible themes surrounding being a woman on the bottom of the blurb it does say beautifully written persistent and eerily haunting she needs gleason's fiction debut takes us in the darker side of human nature and the mysteries of faith and the natural world <gasps> oh my god okay i'm gonna tell you what i just read a novel from one of our most acclaimed literary voices this is perfect for fans of margaret atwood shirley jackson sold i'm so excited to read this this one comes out on the 11th of april next we have a book that i have actually already read and that is wandering souls by cecile pin i actually spoke about this a lot in my december wrap-up that has just gone up so i'm not going to go too in depth with my thoughts absolutely adored this this is one of the best pieces of literary fiction that i have read in a really really long time basically follows three Vietnamese siblings who are immigrants coming to the UK. It follows their experience. It has such amazing commentary surrounding what immigrants go through. It is a tale of family and grief and loss and starting anew and how to kind of carry on. It was beautiful. Cecile Pin's writing too was astounding. Some of the narratives in here are so unique. Absolutely would recommend this one if you are looking for like a literary fiction book. It was amazing. Oh then we have a series. We have a romance trilogy and that is Consider Me, Play With Me, and Unravel Me by Becca Matt. I haven't heard too many people talking about these, but when I have, I have heard really good things. I think as far as I'm aware, these are hockey romances. If they are, I have never read a hockey romance before. I do really want to read Icebreaker by Hannah Grace, so that will probably be the first one. I'll probably get to that before I do get to these, but this I'm really excited for. I haven't read like a romance series for a really, really long time. 
if ever and yeah these are really long so i'm hoping that i absolutely adore them and i just become like obsessed with them that is really what i'm hoping next we have this spells love by kate Roth. another one that i really don't know too much about but i think it is going to be one of those like x hex books where it's like witchy cozy that sort of romance vibe after reading the blurb i think it could be a friends to lovers i have really been in my like friends to lovers romance era recently surprisingly that has never really been a trope that i've really liked or enjoyed i just don't think i picked up the right ones for me but recently i've been eating it up so hopefully this continues that but yeah i haven't actually seen many reviews on this so i'd be really intrigued to see what the general consensus is but i'm really excited to read this one too especially when i want that cozy romance witchy vibe oh my god then we have a book that i'm so excited to read and that is the serpent and the wings of night by carissa broadburn this is one of the 24 books that i am absolutely dying to get to in 2024 like i need to get to them or else and i'm so excited i really want to love this series so much i am craving the feeling of being obsessed obsessed with a fantasy series it taking completely over my life so i'm hoping it does that for me i have heard really good things about it i've only ever really heard really good things about it and i've heard that it's also like vampires meets the hunger games that is all you really need to know i am dying to get to this i really want to film my experience reading it in some sort of reading vlog so hopefully i will get to it soon sounds like a perfect book for me i cannot wait absolutely expecting to rate it five stars oh then we have a thriller and that is the hotel by louise mumford i haven't read a straight up thriller oh my god which one the housemaid by frida mcfadden would have been the last one but that was quite a while ago now and i've really again been craving that thriller feeling i used to love thrillers so much i used to read a multiple of them a month and i was obsessed with the genre and i haven't really been that obsessed the past couple of months 2023 i was definitely slacking with the thrillers 2024 I'm gonna get back on it. All I know about this one is on the back when it says, four of them went to the hotel, only three of them came back. 10 years later, they return one last time. One of my favorite kind of tropes or like little sub sort of things in books and in thrillers especially, and also like dark academia, is when there's a group of friends in the past, maybe one of them went missing, one of them died, something like that. And then that same group of friends go back to the exact same place like a decade later and they are exploring what happened and like there's a ton of secrets. I love that so i'm hoping that this one does it really well and another one that i haven't actually heard anyone talk about so if you've read this please let me know what you thought but whenever i do want that sort of thriller vibe soon this will be the first one that i pick up we then have a horror book that i heard so many people say some really good things about in 2023 i think kayla from books and lala really really liked it and that is leech by hiran ends again i don't really know too much about this but i imagine it has something to do with like bugs and the human body so it's gonna be really cringy but i've heard it's quite frightful and eerie and a little bit strange and i love books like that so this is one that again is on my immediate tbr i just haven't read anything like this in a really really long time and i feel like books like this and horror books are perfect for this time of year just to cuddle up with another one that i'm gonna read really soon and i hope i love it <gasps> Speaking about a book I'm going to read really soon that I hope I love, Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. Still cannot believe I haven't read this. If you know, Divine Rivals was one of my favourite books of 2023 and I've been dying to read the sequel, especially because of how Divine Rivals ended. I am fully anticipating to also rate this one five stars. I don't really know too much about it at all i completely try to avoid people's opinions i am just really excited for this also absolutely terrified another one that i will definitely be filming my experience reading when i do decide to pick it up oh then we have another book that i've actually already read and that is a tempest of tea by hafsa fazal this was the first book that i finished this year i did start it in december and i finished it on the 1st of january 2024 so i'm counting it towards my 2024 reading goal obviously this is a gorgeous proof and how heartbreaking I spilt tea all over it. Hello? Okay, we're back. I was hoping that was going to be book mail. It wasn't. What were we saying? We were talking about A Tempest of Tea and how this is the first book I have ever spilt any beverage on or like food on. I spilt my black tea on it. How hilarious that A Tempest of Tea was the first victim to my tea. I love. This book I absolutely adored. I never thought I was much of a fantasy heist girly, but this book, the ending, I need the second one like right now. I really do recommend this book. It comes out on the 22nd of February, so not too long and it's absolutely going to be worth the wait. Oh, the next couple of ones are also proofs. I haven't really read any of these ones yet, but the first one is Butter by Asako Yuzuki. Since getting my hands on this and hearing about it, it's now one of my most anticipated books, especially like translated anticipated 
anticipated books for 2024 literally all you need to know because this is all i even know about it is what it says on the back first of all how gorgeous is this proof i am absolutely obsessed on the back it says there are two things that i simply cannot tolerate feminists a margarine gourmet chef and a serial murderer with a taste for life's luxuries a journalist with an appetite for a good story a shocking gastronomic exchange this comes out on the 29th of february and it's another one that i'm gonna read so so soon I feel like it's gonna be unhinged and strange and i love anything like that especially if there's a backdrop of food and like cuisine and chefs i'm just absolutely going to love it when i want to read translated fiction next this is probably the one that i'm going to go for i'm going to probably hopefully read it before the end of january i cannot wait for it again another proof is blue sisters by coco Mellors. this one comes out i don't actually know when this one comes out but i believe it's more in the middle of the year this is from the author who wrote cleopatra and frankenstein i really really liked cleopatra and frankenstein when i first read it albeit i can't really remember it too much now but i'm so excited for blue sisters i love any sort of story that has sisters commentary on sisters and i believe that there are three sisters in this one i'm also a sister of three all it says on the blurb and again is all i know is the eldest of the blue sisters their leader is avery she was born wise and world wary bonnie is soft spoken and strong willed her language is the language of the body no matter how old lucky gets she will always be the baby i just absolutely love stories to do with sisters and the relationship between sisters and I do like Coco Mellor's writing so I'm really excited for this one. Oh my god then one of my most anticipated releases for 2024 is The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. Holly Jackson obviously infamous for writing the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. She is one of my favourite authors. She is my favourite young adult author alongside Maureen Johnson but anyway. And this is her new book coming out in April. Again I know nothing about this and I don't want to know anything before going into it because Holly Jackson's books always leave me so surprised. The the way she writes thrillers gags me every time like I am absolutely obsessed with them and I cannot believe that I still have my hands on this I'm so excited to read it so soon and again it is another one that you will see my entire reading experience for in a reading vlog hopefully soon another proof that I cannot wait to read and another like fiction literary fiction one is Bad Habit by Alana S. Portero I'm terrible at explaining proofs when I haven't read them and really knowing what they are about so again on the blurb it says a staggering and sublimely beautiful debut novel following the of age of a young trans woman in Madrid in the last decades of the 20th century and what really really saw me on this other than that was the quote on the front it says I saw a whole generation of boys for like irredeemable angels for like irredeemable angels I feel like the writing style in this is going to be astonishing I cannot wait and then the last proof that I got at the fourth estate showcase is the beholders by Hester Musson and all I know about this one is that it's supposedly gothic and it has secrets and like a family estate and commentary surrounding family and I eat that up every time that's like one of my favorite things to read about and I'm so excited this one is about to come out because it comes out on the 18th of January I have already seen so many people have such high praise for this book so I'm very excited another one that I'm gonna read very soon. We next have a romance and that is Bryn and Sebastian Hate Each Other by Bethany Turner. I actually haven't seen anybody talk about this but this one was very kindly sent to me by the publisher. I am obsessed with this cover. Why is it that American romance books always have the best covers? But I'm so intrigued. It's not often that I want to read a romance book or I have a romance book in my hands that I haven't seen too many people talk about and as far as I'm aware I think it is enemies to lovers and potentially even like colleagues sign me up and then the last book in this stack on the floor which is also a proof is the antique hunter's guide to murder by cl miller it has been so long since i have read any sort of like cozy crime cozy thriller book and i'm so excited for this one i will say i've heard mixed things about it already so i'm a little bit wary going into it but i feel like there is chance for me to love it and if not it's going to be like hopefully a cozy time regardless this one is being published in february so i really need to make a move on with all of these proofs it's probably one that i will try to read fairly soon and yeah i'm very intrigued about this one okay so that was that massive stack that was on the floor now we'll go to these books up here we'll start with this side and on the top here we have signs of cupidity by raven kennedy i have never read a raven kennedy book before i have heard really good things especially for the series i always forget what the first one is called but like the glint gleam 
that sort of series I've had really good things about. But this I believe is like a new series. I don't know if it is just a duology, but one of my colleagues has read it and actually really liked it. So I'm kind of intrigued. And I believe that this is a fantasy romance. I really don't have too much fantasy romance on my physical TBR at the minute. So I'm very excited to get to this one when I want that buy. Next we have a book that I have actually already read and that is Delicate Dream Department Store by Mai Lee. I did read this one this month. It is one of the most recent books that I read and I really enjoyed it. I think if you were looking to get into trans translated fiction it is a really good one for that it wasn't the most groundbreaking thing I've ever read like it was cozy it is the ultimate comfort read think days at the Murasaki bookshop or kind of like before the coffee gets cold if you're into that sort of translated fiction you'll really like this it's basically set at this department store where people can come and like buy dreams they can buy specific dreams specific scenarios and it is a lot about why we dream commentary surrounding that the comfort of that and it was fun it was really cute and whole Awesome. It wasn't my favourite, but I would definitely recommend it if you're looking to get into translated fiction. Oh my god, we have another proof that I'm so excited to get to, and another one of my most anticipated reads for 2024, The Catch by Amy Lee. I am absolutely loving this series that Amy Lee is doing, like the influencer series. This is the third one. I believe the first one is set on you, and then we had X's and O's last year, which I absolutely loved it took me out of a really long reading slump I was like giggling kicking my feet the entire time I really love the way that Amy Lee writes romances I think this one follows a fashion influencer and then a fisherman I'm just so excited. This one also comes out in February, so I feel like it's going to be a perfect read for Valentine's Day. Next, we have these three hardback books, which are all kind of special editions. We have the special edition of Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros with the gorgeous frayed edges, and then the kind of reprint they did of the Fourth Wing special edition. So they do match, and I absolutely love it. I loved Fourth Wing. I've yet to read Iron Flame because I've just had so many mixed things, and I'm quite daunted by the size, but also. I don't really know how I'm going to feel about it, but I will definitely get to it soon. I'm just so happy that I have these ones. Like, they're just so gorgeous together. I love. And then the other special edition that was with them is another fairy loop book, and that is Fae Bound by Sarah L. Arafi. I have heard really good things about their other book that they published, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago now. I haven't read it. I can't remember what it is called. But yeah, The Final Strife. I've heard really good things about that series. I don't know if I'll ever get around to it, but this one I'm so excited for. I don't know if this is a series or a standalone, but number one, I've heard really good things about it in general. Number two, this is the most gorgeous fairy loop edition I've ever seen. So the original cover is like red and black i love this blue moment and like the sun it is absolutely gorgeous the foiling on it that is the front and then the back braid edges are absolutely stunning i don't know what it is but every time fairy loot does like a blue book they always end up being my favorites this is the first end paper and then we have another gorgeous one on the back it's like sun and moon anything to do with the sun and moon I will start crying. And then guys, the naked hardback. Look at how gorgeous that is. I am absolutely obsessed. And not only that, on the other side of the dust jacket, we have an alternate cover. I love this Fairy Loot edition so much. This is probably one of my favorite ones that I've ever seen them do. So I'm gonna cherish this forever and I'm so excited to read it. Oh my God, okay, so this is the first book in a new trilogy from her. Joanne was born on the battlefield, lived on the battlefield, and one day she knew she'd die on the battlefield. Oh god, okay, I'm gonna become so attached to her. <laughs> they haven't been seen for a millennium, but now Yiren and Lettel are thrust into their seductive world, torn between their loyalty to each other, their elven homeland, and their hearts. There's Faye in this. I'm sold. I'm so excited to read it. We have Shot With Crimson by Nicola Upson. I really haven't heard too many people talk about this, but I'm really intrigued by it. If I'm remembering right, I think there were comparisons to Daphne du Maurier and Rebecca. So I imagine there's gonna be similar themes. So I imagine there's gonna be similar themes to that one which if that is the case I'm probably going to eat it up if I like the writing style I'm just very intrigued because I haven't really heard too many people talk about it but yeah we have shot with crimson we also have burn and wood by Eleanor Caton this is the paperback release I really wanted to read it when it was out in hardback but it was so big and it daunted me so much but I'm definitely going to read this now that it is in paperback if not I will just listen to the audiobook I've always wanted to read a book by Eleanor Caton I had so many positive things about this book when it did come out in hardback so I'm very intrigued I've heard that it's dark it's fiction that also has that little bit of like a thriller weird moment and I'm gonna love it I feel oh we then have another book that I very recently read and that is We Spread by Ian Reid I've been wanting to read this book for years and I did not realize as I was reading this that Ian Reid is the author of I'm Thinking of 
of ending things i read that like two years ago and i loved it it was one of the first really weird speculative kind of fever dream books i ever read and i fell in love so now it kind of makes sense that they were the same author to be honest this one was great this is a book definitely for the ambiguous girlies if you don't like ambiguous stories speculative stories where you're not going to find out at the end what happened like i'm sorry to break it to you you're going to be just as confused as you are at the beginning then don't read this book but for me i love that and i absolutely loved this one we are basically set in a elderly care home we are following this older woman and it's just questioning whether like what is happening happening around her and to her is a deterioration of her own mind or if there are like darker things at play I would recommend it for sure <laughs> guys and then completely different to so many of these books and I am terrified to read this and I've accepted that I'm not going to read it quick it's going to be a lengthy process but I'm ready for it I'm going to read my first Proust <laughs> I am nervous to say the least, this book is over 1,000 pages and this is Remembrance of Things Past, Volume 1. I have wanted to read Proust for so long, but obviously by the sheer size, I've been absolutely terrified. But I do feel like this is the year where I am going to start this series. I believe in this specific translation, the Black Penguin editions, there are three volumes all of a similar length and i very much accepted that this is going to take me months to read and i'm okay with that i just want to start it and very slowly make my way through it because i feel like i'm going to absolutely love it so much i finally have my hands on it so now i need to dedicate myself to start it i definitely want to start it before the end of january and maybe i don't know i'll film my experience reading it and document that and see and hopefully bring you guys along with me because i know that so many people want to read proust but obviously it's kind of terrifying so yeah I'm gonna start my first Proust. I'm nervous. Guys, I know you can only see this final stack here, but we do actually have another little stack on the floor. I purposely kept all of these together because they are all from the same author. <laughs> I'll give you like 10 seconds to guess who this author is. Why I have like 10 books from one author. Take a while to guess. It's Clarice Lispector. Of course it is. I basically decided to treat myself to every single book that Waterstone sells of Clarice Lispector, The Penguin, Modern Classic Editions, because those are the ones that I'm reading and I'm collecting. And I kind of just decided to splurge and get every single one. I did it as a reward to myself because this thing happened with my content and I just wanted to give it to myself as a little reward. Obviously I would have got these books over time anyway because she's my favourite author and I want to read every single one. There's just something now about owning the finished collection that gives me such joy that I just wanted to do it. So I did. So let's go through all of the ones that I got. I got The Imitation of the Rose by Clarice Lispector. This is a short story collection from her. I do and will have all of these short stories in this one, which is literally her complete short stories, but the Penguin Modern Edition. But I had to get this small Penguin Cloth Bound Edition of her because the pink, first of all, and also I just love collecting these. And then, yeah, I got the complete short stories of Clarice Lispector. I got this short story collection, which again is in all of those, but I kind of wanted it just to read it at that time. And that was Daydream and Drunkenness of a Young Lady. I absolutely loved reading this. I think that this little snippet of three of her short stories is perfect if you want to start getting into her writing. We then have why this world a biography of Clarice Lispector by Benjamin Moser. Benjamin Moser if you're watching this I know you're not but if you're watching this thank you so much for doing the lord's work and translating so many of Clarice's books. His translations are absolutely astounding he did pretty much all of or most of the Penguin Modern Classic editions. Honestly I give my life to him thank you so much for your service and translating her work but he also did write the infamous biography for her. I'm so so excited to get into this this is definitely going to be the first non-fiction book that I read in 2024 I'm going to start it very soon. We have An Apprenticeship or The Book of Pleasures by Clarice Lispector we have The Apple in the Dark, which is also the next one that I'm going to read from her. I am reading them in chronological order, so we're now on to this book. Too Much of Life by Clarice Lispector. This is a non-fiction. It is like a collection of her essays and just her musings, her non-fiction musings. I'm kind of terrified to read this. So I feel like it's going to break my heart. And then we have The Passion According to GH. These were the only ones that I was yet to own from her. But then for Christmas, one of my best friends... <sighs> Her gifts every single time. I know she's watching this. I love you with my entire heart. Last year, I think for my birthday, she got me a gorgeous edition of The Secret History, but for Christmas this year, she got me this edition of Near to the Wild Heart. You may not have seen these editions before, but they are published in America, and there are like four of her novels, and they make up this picture of her. So this is obviously a really famous picture of Clarice Lispector, and these books kind of make up that portrait. Obviously, this is gonna be the top half, and it's Near to the Wild Heart, my favorite book 
I nearly cried when I opened it. <laughs> so yeah, now I need to make space for all of these Clarice Lispector books on my TBR. I'm gonna end up having a whole shelf for her, and honestly, as I should. And finally, my throat is killing me. The sun has pretty much set. We are on to the last couple of books. These books are all hardback books. First of all, we have Sword Catcher by Cassandra Clare. This is the gorgeous fairy loot edition. I am obsessed with this. Look at these sprayed edges. I've yet to read Sword Catcher. I really, really want to. And I've yet to honestly read any Cassandra Clare book. I really do want to read the Mortal Instruments series. If it is worth a read, please let me know. I will just have to dedicate so much time to it. But Sword Catcher will definitely be my first Cassandra Clare. I'm really excited. I know it's also her first like adult fantasy book so I'm really intrigued to see what her writing is like. I love this fairy loot edition so much I'm so happy I have that. We then have two books from the same series. We have books one and three because I cannot find the hardback of book two anywhere. If you know where I can get it you will absolutely save my life. Please let me know. But we have Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber and A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. Again I really need to get The Ballad of Never After in hardback but I cannot find it anywhere and I'm not willing to drop like £200 on a hardback book. But yeah we have books one of three of this series i'm so excited to read it i am going to be reading it soon you may see my reading experience that is all i'm going to say on that and then the last two books of this haul are arguably two of my favorite books that i have gotten in very recent times or honestly ever so both of these were very very kindly sent to me by the folio society i have been such a fan of the folio society for years i have always wanted to own so many of the beautiful editions that they do if you don't know who folio society are absolutely worth checking them out you will probably spend your entire life savings on them but they basically do special editions of books and i don't know if you may recognize them but i do have a box set of the bronte books by folio i think they're an older release but i got them second hand but these two books were very kindly sent to me by folio society it was an absolute dream and honor to receive them i still like pinch myself that i have these but they sent me the haunting of your house by shirley jackson and we have always lived in the castle by shirley jackson they're gorgeous so they come in these beautiful beautiful slip cases like I am absolutely obsessed with them I will show you them more close up too because they are absolutely worth it this is the cover of a haunting of hill house and then they are all so beautifully illustrated like I'm just absolutely obsessed with them I don't know how well you're going to be able to see but like some illustrations I'm just oh my god we have a pile of books falling on me right now Ow. <laughs> anyway, it was so beautiful. That was The Haunting of Your House. And then You've Always Lived in the Castle. Not to say it's my favourite one, but it might be. This one has an introduction by Donna Tarr. And I'm just like, I'm obsessed with these editions so much. That is the front cover of We've Always Lived in the Castle. That is the back cover. Again, like absolutely beautiful. I'm just absolutely obsessed. Obviously, as I said already, I love Shirley Jackson so much. So having these gorgeous, gorgeous editions, I am just so full of gratitude. Thank you so much, Folio Society, for very kindly sending me these. So there we have it. That is my 50 plus very long overdue book haul. I will definitely also be having another book haul coming very soon. I did say I was going on a book buying ban for the beginning of 2024, but I've been really craving buying some books. So if I don't have any self-restraint, you will be seeing that soon. But yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you have read any of the books that I have mentioned or I have hauled today, please let me know whether you like them or you dislike them or if they're also on your TBR. If you have any opinions on which one I should start with, please also let me know because I get very overwhelmed. The beginning of January, I really have not had any idea as to what genres I want to read, so you can very much convince me if you want me to read a certain one now. Or if you want to show you stayed until the very end, but you don't really know what to comment, comment a stack of books emoji. But yeah, as always, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up. I really, really appreciate it, but it does also really help my channel out. If you also enjoyed this video and you are not yet subscribed, I would love it if you considered doing so. I would absolutely love to have you here. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching and for spending some time with me. I really hope you enjoyed and I will see you again very, very soon with another video. Mm -hmm.